Ah, greetings and salutations, my most excellent friends. Welcome once more to the Chi Ranger Adventures podcast. This is episode number 12 of season number two, and thank you so much for stopping by the Chi Ranger vlog channel to watch the simulcast of the podcast. Thank you so much for downloading it via iTunes or listening to it on ChiRanger.com. I am always, always totally stoked to interact with you guys, to see your comments pop up over on the blog site, to see them pop up over on the vlog channel. It's really, really cool. And thank you so much. You know, I wouldn't be able to do this without you. So thank you so much for taking part of your day to watch the video or part of your day or week to listen to the podcast. I am really, really thankful for it. And without further ado, let's get the show on the road today. Height D just got home not too long ago. Oh, yeah. And I raise my frosty beverage to you. Hmm. Hit the spot. So let's talk about the news, shall we? Now, the first thing I want to mention is an international sporting event that's taking place beginning today, the day that the podcast goes out. And that is the Tour de Korea. Now, there is a welcoming ceremony and kind of launching ceremony taking place in Incheon today. It starts off at 10 a.m. and lasts until 6 p.m. The first stage of the race isn't until Monday. It winds all the way through the country, going all the way down to Yosu and then back up into Seoul for the last stage. And lasts, I believe, seven to, I think, seven days. I'm going to put the link to the Tour de Korea in the show notes over on the website. So if you're watching this on the Chi Ranger vlog channel, you can go down to the description box and click on the link going to the show notes and you can get information on the Tour de Korea. But Joe and I are actually going to head out Sunday to cover the event. It's supposed to rain, which I'm really not looking forward to, but it should be pretty cool because this is an international event. I mean, even Lance Armstrong has once competed in the Tour de Korea. So it's a really, really cool event. And you can look forward to seeing a video about the event coming up at the end of next week. So I'm really, really jazzed about it. I'm hoping to use the GoPro cam cameras to get some cool slow motion effects of the bikes going past as they do the parade. Uh, we have press access, so we'll be able to go around and hopefully talk to a lot of people and get some behind the scenes action. So if you like cycling, if you like sports, if you like international flair and you are in Korea, I really recommend checking out the Tour de Korea website so you can see the bike route and maybe even get a glimpse of this international event. That's pretty cool. Now, the other thing I want to talk about this week in the news section is actually a question that came in last week from Robert, and it's about Jasmine Lee. Now, here's the story with Jasmine Lee, and as I take another swig. Hmm. News and booze. I like that. Um, so the, the way that the story kind of broke is Jasmine Lee was just elected to the National Assembly. Now, that in and of itself doesn't sound all that interesting, but let's go back into Jasmine's history. Now, Jasmine is from the Philippines. She's a Filipina. She was born in the Philippines, fell in love with a Korean man, moved to Korea, learned Korean, is now fluent in Korean. Korea is her home. She became a naturalized citizen. Her husband then died, and she decided to take up for public office, got a constituency, went through all the hassles of an election, and is now in office. That's an amazing story. No matter where you are from, that is an amazing story. Moving to a different country, learning a new language, making that new country your home, going through the citizenship process, becoming a citizen, and then going into public work, public office. That is is cool. However, during the entire election, there was controversy. And it all stemmed from whether or not she should be allowed to run because she was not a naturally born Korean. She's a naturalized citizen with all the rights and privilege of a citizen who lives in this country. But people were attacking her 
because she was from the Philippines. They were attacking her because she wasn't born here. And as I saw this go through, there are a lot of arguments being made by various different populations about, oh, this is racism, this is xenophobia. And, and there may be some credence to that. But, but, and this is why I want to put it in the news section to talk about discussion, is that when you look at the United States, you look at Barack Obama and all the crap that went on during the presidential election and even up until last year, where he had to prove that he was a naturally born citizen to be eligible enough to hold the office of president. You know, there were no questions about his citizenship status when he was holding a congressional senatorial seat. It was a moot point. Who cared? He was a citizen. He held an office. But people really drew a line on whether or not he should be president because he comes from a unique background and because he wasn't born in the contiguous 48, or even in Hawaii for that matter. Well, he was born in Hawaii, but there, was, there were questions about, you know, was he really born in Hawaii? Was he really an American citizen? And I guess the reason why I put this in this section is that I think that mentality, no matter whether you're in the United States, whether you're in Korea, is extremely, extremely outdated. We live in a global community. We live in a world where I may be an American citizen, but I haven't lived in the United States for three years. I have friends that have lived in Korea for more than a decade. Korea is their home. They still hold their nationality, their passports from their, their birth countries. But would they be better suited to run for office here where they live, breathe, where they interact on a daily basis? Or would they be better off running for a public office back home where they haven't been to on a you know, long basis for more than a decade? I guess for me, the issue comes down to if someone is a naturalized citizen with all the rights and privileges that that conveys, then it doesn't matter where you are from. That's for the voters to decide. It shouldn't be left up to an eligibility standpoint. It's just that if you have Joe Below Zero from the planet Mars, who's a naturalized citizen, who understands what his constituency wants, and he is a naturalized citizen, he should be allowed to hold office. That should be the end of it. Let the voters decide whether or not they want that person to represent them. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts on whether or not, you know, someone who is born in the country is better suited to hold office than someone who is living in the country and is a naturalized citizen. Going back to the Jasmine Lee story, you know, a lot of the controversy always surrounded her personal circumstances and not necessarily her politics. And I think that's also a weak argument is that if you don't like someone who's running for office, take a look at their politics. Don't take a look at the person. Take a look at the politics. That's one of the reasons why I hate election seasons. That's one of the reasons why I hate the United States election season. Because rather than just a few months leading up to the election date, it lasts for years. It lasts for years. It is crazy. And I really, really dislike that. I can't wait for the November elections to come and go by so they can be over with. And finally, and finally, and finally, can the people that are actually elected do some of the work they were elected for? So there you have it. That's the news this week. Thank you very much for watching on YouTube. If you'd like to hear the rest of the podcast, go ahead and surf on over to ChiRanger.com on the show notes. You can listen to it there, or download it there. Of course, we are in iTunes as well. So until next time, y'all have a great day over on YouTube, and we'll be back after the jingle.